All right, ladies and gents, and welcome on my new uh, chapter of my podcast, Loud and Proud. Uh, I'm here today with Jennifer. Uh, she's an editor and a journalist, and uh, she's going to ask me some questions about all the um, cruise industry and uh, everything, how it started, how the virus affects us uh, performers. And uh, so, hi, Jennifer. How are you doing today? Hey. How are you, Phil? Great to see you all the way from Italy. Absolutely, yes. It's been uh, like one year and a half, pretty much, or two years since we met on the Spirit, right? Yes, the Spirit. There was a great uh, cruise of the uh, Greek Isles in Italy. Yeah. And we always talk, my husband Dave and I always talk about how you and Keisha were by far the best performers <laughs> on the cruise and you were in the little lounge instead yeah. of on the big stage where we said you belonged and so I'm thrilled to hear that uh, your career has taken off and you're now on that big stage where you should have been when we were cruising. <laughs> Pretty much, not, not all the times, just a few times uh, per week because on the encore, uh, we're talking about Norwegian, right? Uh, yes. The Ancora was bandmaster and they featured this new brand new show which was called uh, Ocean Music Fest and uh, I was kind of the leader there but every every musician uh, had their big part of the show so it was pleaded as we, we could have like the same amount of time as performers uh, but I used to finish the show and like the highlight was like uh, uh, the um, New Year Eve that we had a full packed uh, deck pool. So it was amazing. I wish you were there. I know, me too. <laughs> a lot of people wish we were cruising. And in fact, uh, I'm, that's why I'm so happy you give me a chance to ask you these questions because Absolutely. if there are people out there watching like me who are cruise fans and unfortunately had a cruise canceled yeah. this year because of the pandemic, a lot of us are wondering when the cruise lines are going to be resuming normal operations. And uh, when I think of that, I try to be mindful of the fact that there are just as many cruise ship employees who would love to be able to get back to work. Yeah. And so I just thought this would be a good chance for you to tell all your fans, um, first of all, how you got started as a cruise ship performer. I mean, it started really... No, I don't want to say as a joke, but uh, as like a tryout. Like I just sent three mails, literally three mails in 2000. Like email? Emails, yes. Uh -huh. In 2013. And one of the agents used to reply me like, hey, we see some potential here. Uh, why don't you develop this kind of, uh, you know, uh, act? Because I, I apply to be uh, as a soloist, which means mm -hmm. you and the acoustic guitars and you just sing the songs like that without backing tracks and everything. Uh, but then lately they came out with uh, offering me a position, uh, position as a um, show band singer. And so I just started like this, you know, I still remember on my on first flight because I think I only flew one time before that when I was like 11, like thinking, where am I going? What am I doing? <laughs> You know, why did they chose me? I'm the only Italians as a singer. You know, it's it's weird to be uh, performing on a American actually uh, company right now. And you know, I I didn't have any experience before. But then you know, contract by contract, it got better and better. And now finally, I'm one of the supervisors. And you know, I'm kind of established. But I don't want to really say it out loud because <laughs> when. <laughs> When, you know, uh, everything was set to be uh, in that path, then the pandemic uh, happened. And, you know, it's something that never happened before in all the career industry and all our, uh, you know, uh, environment. So it was crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. Do you remember where you were when you first, not when everything shut down, but where you were when you first just heard about the coronavirus? Yeah, and actually, I, I still was on the ship when this all started because I remember in January, uh, we had a few signals of this is well that that it was coming. Uh, like on a ship, uh, some measures were already taking place around uh, January, February. Uh, in fact, I left the ship in uh, around Jan uh, no, February 10th, and you know we already were taking measures to to avoid any spreading of the virus on board. But then uh, I, I finished my contract, and by you know March, when the 
when we did the lockdown here in Italy. Uh, it was like around March 10, something like that. I was home and I still remember the guys that were staying on board because, you know, their country uh, didn't allow them to come back. So, I mean, it was very... So, so you were home in Italy when the home. lockdown, you yes. worked on a ship when no, it happened. Fortunately, I have to say yes, because, I mean, <laughs> you know, you are you are there and seeing what happened lately uh, you know i really prefer to to be home during that time because you never know right yeah. so i was very close to all my friends that were still on the ship you know the new band master that uh, he was there after me uh, you know he he lived all that stuff he left even before then others uh, musician left it, it was just depending on the on the their countries actually it wasn't about the cruise lines so you know when people were mad about the cruise lines it wasn't about them it was about their countries uh, if they were opening their uh, airports or not so that's so how what would have happened if say you were a cruise ship performer and your country's borders closed down you had to get off the ship do you, do you no, know what happened to no, you i mean from what I know, they just stayed on the ship uh, without guests, and that's all. Waiting yes. for the best. <laughs> Did you hear any reports from your uh, friends who were still on the ship as to how the cruise passengers who were on board ships when this happened, how they dealt with it? Did, did no, they take no, it in stride or was there any panic? Or? Not really, not really. I never heard and, you know, reading reviews from the guests. I never seen... And I know how the company manages well when this that stuff happens. I never seen anyone come, um, how you say, like complain about that kind of stuff. Uh, so that that means you know they really manage it in the best way. And uh, I didn't see at all any like really uh, infection on board or people getting sick as a, as crazy, you know. Actually, because on the ship, if there are no uh, yeah, people that got the virus, how can you spread it? No. So I, I've read some of the um, of the interview by you know our our president Frank De Rio saying that um, you know they allowed they allowed people to to fly but not to cruise. So yeah. you know that's crazy. <laughs> but what can we do? <laughs> So how long has it been now since you stopped work with the cruise lines? It was, uh, yeah, I, I my contract was finished, our contract finished in uh, February 8th. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, nothing, nothing at all. So yeah, we're still, still here waiting and hoping for the best. I've seen some of the cruise lines here in Italy uh, started again as a Costa and MSC. Uh, I've seen now they're allowing... Uh, some ships to to sail from uh, Miami and Port Canaveral, right? So yeah, uh, unfortunately, this week uh, several of the cruise lines announced they were extending their no cruising at least through the end of November, and actually, some of them have canceled yeah. all the way into 2021. In fact, I think I saw the Spirit; they yeah. weren't going to have any. I cruise. mean, the Spirit was a brand new; it was completely renewed in February. And then they shut it down. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're just um, mentioning like official statements here because I don't know anything about it. So, um, yeah. It's I mean, all on you, Phil. We want the, the definitive answer on what's happening with the cruise industry from you. Uh, no, I know you can't give us that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate that our, you know, we're just staying here until now, officially until the end of October. But, you know, uh, some ships have been already cancelled until uh, spring yeah. 2021. So. so what have you been doing to fill the time, all this time that you haven't been working I on cruise ships? It's not only just me. I'm, I've seen, like, especially during the lockdown period uh, between April, May. Maybe in USA it was a little later. The lockdown in Italy happened a little before. And you know, I've been doing a lot of videos on my here on my YouTube channels. You know, uh, trying to. I mean, fortunately now we have our own place. Thank you to the cruise ship industry and uh, you know my own studio as this one. 
fortunately, because if this happened like two or three years ago, now it would be a real problem. So, and I see, and I know a lot of uh, crew members that just started dead contracts like that. And now they are, you know, in the middle of nowhere because, uh, but yeah, I try to, to spend my time recording videos and, uh, uh, you know, I actually do a lot of modeling. <laughs> I love modeling. modeling. Okay. Yes. Kisha has been cooking uh, all over the place and <laughs> now she started the, her own uh, hobby as a building uh, dolls. So, okay. yeah. Okay. And uh, I know a lot of uh, other performance. They started new companies by themselves as a, you know, uh, baking, um, teaching classes. Uh, I teach some of the, you know, on guitar lesson online as well, but uh, you know, that's not main, uh, my main act. And uh, I know others have been uh, trading, uh, you know. Trading, what, trading, yeah. trading, yes. Trading, the, what are they trading? Um, on the market. What I do you mean say. like stocks? Like stocks, the, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you meant like bartering services like. No, 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 no. Trading stocks, yes. Okay. And, you know, I've seen... Yeah, actually, yesterday they uh, announced that Broadway will shut down through uh, May 2021, which is yeah. even crazier. I mean, and, you know, everybody are freaking out because that's true. I mean, a lot of employers, not just as performing performers, but also who works behind the scene, you know, the, the tailors and, you know, uh, sound technicians, light technicians, everyone like on a ship, but you know on a bigger environment there's not only us it's it's for everyone and here in Italy unfortunately you say okay just go play in the clubs but here that's not really a big business about that even if now they allow uh, you know smaller crowds and stuff like that mm -hmm. but um, yeah it's that's just what it is at the moment <laughs> trying to so stay positive in addition to your YouTube channel, you also do a lot of Facebook performances. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that in terms of what kind of music and how you pick the songs? Is it chosen by fans or do you just your personal taste? Hello. So mostly uh, I just started my own private group so I can taste what people likes mostly. Actually, I did a video a few months ago that went kind of viral with like 400 and more uh, shares on Facebook about Kiss. You know, I started this kind of um, uh, virtual features with the famous artists as Brian May, uh, guys from Kiss, Paul Stanley, and others. And one, especially the one with Paul Stanley, was uh, went viral, and everybody were freaking out. Like, and so you know, I said, okay, let's do other Kiss covers, and also Bruce Kulick, the Kiss guitarist, shared my video videos. So. I had a lot of feedback and so I stay, I, you know, I, I kept going on the kiss vibe. I also do, you know, as you, you like Elvis, yeah. <laughs> you know, all my many Elvis song. Don't, I haven't forgotten that. <laughs> oh, uh, return the sender. <laughs> <laughs> that one, right? <laughs> I need the whole song, but I won't hold you to it right now. So you can keep going. I didn't mean to interrupt, but <laughs> And also, yeah, mostly what you know, what what we like to do, uh, what we do on the ship. But um, yeah, that's the only way to to stay positive and keep focus on who we are. Because a lot of people get get crazy with you know with this period that we had. It's you know it's becoming a real year, full year. Yeah. So. And so do you find you get good feedback, you and Keisha, from your uh, YouTube and your Facebook in terms of how does that feedback influence, uh, feedback influence your performance? Actually, it's very important because, um, I, I mean, on Internet, it's very weird because algorithms of the, of the um, platform changes every day. So if one day you did a video that went viral, you do another one, you never know if that is going to happen again because everything changes uh, day by day. And so lately it's been a little less than uh, usual because also people are a little less on their phones. You know, now there's not really a lockdown. So people are more about their lives, some, you know, return to work and stuff. 
Um, but yeah, mostly um, it's very important the feedback. Like, you know, uh, it's hard doing covers and tributes like that because uh, you can really uh, have the, a good feedback, but also really a bad one because uh, some haters showed up as well wow. because that that's how it is. I mean, as a fan, um, you know, sometimes I say, why you do a cover if, you know, they already did it as the, I mean, if right. Elvis was already there, why you do another Elvis? Just do you. It's true. Well, I, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's also a case of when you perform, um, there are some super fans who are never going to want to hear anybody but the original do the song. But I think Elvis has really sort of transcended that. He's gotten into such the mainstream where you can hear other people do Elvis and of course. Not, because not take offense. No, no. Whereas some of the some of uh, the uh, Kiss fans or the if someone's really into someone, they're always going to think your performance falls short. But yeah. um, I always thought. You did a great job uh, being true to the songs on the cruise ship because sometimes when you hear a performer and they change a song so much, you think the original right. arrangement. Right. Exactly. I mean, no need to change it. You know. That's that's my my point of view because uh, as a cruise ship performer, uh, I know that people coming to to listen to the best version as the original. Uh, that means you don't have to rearrange it or or change it so much, even if that's the most creative way to do it. But uh, the people won't listen to the song that they already know. And that's why you have to give them. So I try to stick to the originals as much as I could. Even if, like I say, the you know the most the most creative way to do a cover, it's like completely change it. But if you have to completely change it, that you you do an original like right. we do too. <laughs> so. And sometimes you can do a cover that is a completely different arrangement that then becomes the standard. One of the songs that comes to mind is um, Etta James's version of At Last. Yes. Which everybody knows that version. That one, right. The original version of that song was completely different. And if people out there don't know it, go Google um, At Last by one of the big band orchestras. It's completely yeah. different. And yet, Etta James took it, completely changed the arrangement. And now I do kind of get offended when I hear like someone like Beyonce, they do the Etta James version. I say, go get your own <laughs> arrangement, you know, that, Etta, that's yeah. Etta's arrangement, not yours. But that's how it works. I mean, if you do a cover, then get bigger than the original, it's exactly. something. But if you are just a career ship performer and you do a cover and you completely change it, people would be like, what the hell you're doing? What did you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... So on your um, YouTube channel, do you have any aspirations for that in terms of, is this something that you could really grow into like yeah. a, a I mean, I mean, you you can become a YouTube partner if you reach a certain amount of uh, uh, time views and subscribers, which I'm trying to do it. I'm pretty like 75% done. So, but then you don't, you cannot really, really make it out of living if you don't hit like big numbers as really million. 4,000 hours or something like that. You have yeah. to read. Yes. I'm kind of halfway there for that, which is hard really? to, to, yeah. yes. But uh, now views doesn't count anymore. Uh, it just oh. counts for how long you watch that video. And right. uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah, you can reach that and become partner, but then uh, you know, to start really making a living out of it, you really need to start hitting like big numbers. Right. You know, you never know. Uh, it just starts and then keep going. And, you know, uh, I always wanted to have um, an active YouTube channel because I wanted to share uh, my stories on ships as well. But if you don't really have like uh, a good following, you know, it gets a little harder. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a good chance. So have you taken advantage of this time being off the ship to try to grow your social media audience? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really plan to do it. But like I say, one day, uh, one of the Kiss guitarists, Bruce Krulik, uh, shared my videos. And then I've seen, you know, the potential of growing because, uh, you know, the more uh, exposure you get and the easier it is to grow. Uh, and then I say, okay, just let's try. Why not? You have one year uh, of time to, to do it. So I say, yeah, 
let's try to do a video a week, then two a week, and then let's see with this podcast as well, which is very nice to have you here. You see, yeah, even, you. even uh, how we, we were chatting and, you know, it just starts like that. You don't really plan it, this kind of stuff. And just like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and so now you're doing your... Uh, YouTube channel, Facebook, your modeling. Is there anything else you're no, doing? I'm not Actually, a model. <laughs> I'm not a model. <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I'm just like this. I'm, but I'm not a pro model. I live it. Oh, okay, so what are you doing just uh, to pay your bills or to keep going during this shutdown? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I mean, like in US, we had our, uh, our, how you say? Uh, government funds you know during that oh, okay. year which That's helped sure. uh, a little i know in usa watch much much bigger than us yeah. <laughs> but uh you know it still was an help even if we were planning to have a much bigger income for this year to pay yeah. our bills but uh Yeah, that was basically it. And there's not really a lot of other revenues, if not from my originals, uh, but that's really small. I mean, <laughs> not really compared to what been uh, are achieving on a cruise ship industry. I mean, that's our main thing. And the more, and also, you know, if you do a good job, you also have a, a chance to, to grow, you know, even yeah. on economic side, so. So when you say your originals, you mean your original music, like CDs? I yeah. remember when yeah. you um, My songs that are on Sirius XM with mm -hmm. my um, record label. Um, he, he, he actually put uh, two of my songs that I wrote, one sang by Kisha and one um, by me on Velvet Channel of Sirius XM. Oh, okay. Yes, but, you know, it's some revenues are coming, but really... That's been a tough year <laughs> yeah. under that point of view, because like I say, here in Italy also, you don't really have a chance to, to do anything now. I mean, all the restaurants, bars, you know, they are really struggling to, to, to make a living out of this. So hopefully we'll come back, you know, by, by the beginning of the new year, hopefully somehow. And so I know you can't speak in an official capacity on behalf of any of the cruise lines, but have you as an employee heard anything in terms of even just a general timeline as to when they think I mean, employees uh, are going to be called back and things are going to ramp up again? It depends from um, any different um, companies. Some are resuming operations. Others, they're taking a little more time. Uh, yeah, that's all I know, really. Um, I mean, even speaking to, the, to our heads, you know, it's just a, 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 we are all on a hold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, those are all the questions I had for you. I did have maybe one surprise request and... Bill did not know I was going to ask him to do this, but I was thinking about songs that you sang on our cruise and the ones that I really liked. And one that struck me as very appropriate for 2020 okay. was Under Pressure. Oh my God. <laughs> did we do that already? What? Did we used to that uh, you already? Did that. Spirit? Yeah, you did that. So I didn't know if you could just sing a few bars of that for us because I think that's uh, the just like that, a cappella. Just like that. Oh, come on. You can do it. You did it on the cruise ship. Yeah. Um, pressure, pressure down on me, pressure down on you, no man is for. Under pressure, the birds are building down. Mm -mm. The streets, <laughs> the streets. I don't remember the words. <laughs> Actually, it puts people on streets. And that's what yeah, it is, exactly. right? This is ourselves mm -mm. under pressure. Right. I think now I'm, I can be your backup singer now. <laughs> <laughs> Were you any any close to performing acting? Have you ever done something like that? I'm a church choir singer. I, I like to stand in the back and hide behind my music. Yeah, I'm but not still, a, you I'm, still. I'm not a front man like you are, so. Yeah. I like to just stay in the back. If I could be a pip, that would be my, that was my dream. I always wanted to be, you know, Gladys Knight in the pips. I wanted to be. Oh, that's beautiful. You, uh, you also have the look and the groove to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Well, when you guys make it back to the to the big stage on the ship, if you need a backup singer, I'm your girl. So. And I am I never had the chance to do it because, because uh, you know, uh, it's been a long time and we connected a little later on Facebook, but I'm still, you know, very humbled by your message uh, that you left uh, on the ship, you know, uh, oh. on the spirit. Yeah. Uh, you were you were saying that uh, you make the difference and, you know. Yeah, well, it's true. And it may, it, I feel that the cruise ship performers don't get enough attention because yeah, you're out looking, and especially on that cruise, it's a Mediterranean cruise, you're out all day seeing the Parthenon, Santorini, all these beautiful things, yeah. but then you're back on the ship, and it could be kind of boring if you didn't have entertainment, and um, yeah, so whenever you see someone, whenever I see someone who I think does a great job, I like to try to let the powers that be, the people upstairs know, because typically they only hear complaints if somebody yeah. doesn't do a good job, so. No, 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 I mean... It, it's true. Also, I wanted to mention that that cruise was so by far my favorite. Really? Uh, Mediterranean tri trip and Santorini Island. And, you know, it was, I never. Well, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good question. How much do you as an employee of the ship get to see and partake in the ports that you, that we as passengers get to visit? You, how much time do you get to take advantage of that? I mean, as a performer, as a singer, and even the production singers, uh, you have uh, a really good chance to, to go out and enjoy your time. It's just based on how much you want it. Because yeah. when a night then you have to perform three or four hours, and then you went to sleep a little later at night, and you don't really have the, and then you have a really, I don't want to say small, but you know, uh, not not big window to go out and do stuff. You have to get up early, and then you don't want to be tired at night. So it, you really need to balance all of that. So mm -hmm. I, for me, I go out only when I don't really have a stressful nights. And my favorite nights, uh, favorite days to go out are the days when we are off. Um, but you know, as a, it depends also on a cruise that you're doing, because if you do the Mediterranean one, uh, you did that 10 days trip. So, right. you know, you, you are there every 10 days, but like, for example, in Alaska and, uh, we've been doing Caribbean seven days cruises and you're every week on the same places, you know, once you've seen it, you don't really yes. want to get out. Uh, every 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 time. I mean, I know all the cruise cruise directors that they haven't been out for two or three months because they're oh. very busy, really, all day long making announcements. And it's just also based on you. If you want to spend that two hours off that you have off the ship, keep stressing, and you know, uh, keep doing that other stuff or relaxing a little bit to be up mood later when you have your your. Um, uh, your work to do so it just really depends on you i'm more relaxing and i'll do my job as best as i can later <laughs> so what was on that cruise what was the favorite place that you saw on uh, the pure santorini beautiful um also alaska beautiful um we've been in new york only one i mean twice but only once i had the chance to go out uh still that's what i was talking about you know it's funny because people are saying oh nice now you go on a cruise again ah, yeah you're gonna have fun yeah i'm still going to work you know yeah going to work <laughs> so yeah, well, i mean to sign up work on a cruise ship see the world you've seen some yeah actually the only place that i'm missing right now it's uh asia and yeah. australia that's the only two places that we are missing. But I also know other crew members that they've been all around the place. And, you know, seven years and with two off. So it's pretty much five years that I've been doing this. Um, and where do you see yourself in five years from now? If you had your way, what would you be doing five years from now? I mean, my my goal is to to keep doing what we're doing because right now, you know, when you become a supervisor, it's you really want to keep that. But also, like to become a headliner, I, I'm working on uh, that as well. We have our show as a headliners as well. Now we have uh, an agent. Actually, that's what I forgot to mention. You know, in March uh, during the 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 vacation that we we had 
the where... forced vacation. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I mean, our, our vacation was the real um, vacation. Yeah, okay. was between February and April for real. Yeah. Uh, but like in, Mar in March, we had um, like, um, how you say, um, um, a tryout, how you say, it? I don't okay. remember. An audition? Or... Audition, right. <laughs> Uh, audition for uh, for uh, different cruise lines to to be headliners, you know, which is uh, in in London. But we did it, we couldn't go uh, without with a new I mean with a new agent only for that because you can you can uh, apply and you have um, to fulfill your agreements with the agent that keeps you as a, a regular performer and also if you are a headliner that's a different story because there, there are like weekly uh, contracts or, you know, cruise contracts. It's not really monthly like we used to do. Uh, so that's the main goal because then, like you say, there you're always on, um, on the big room. You do yeah. two shows like that. And that's the, the stuff that I like to do. Actually, on the Spirit, I did my premiere of the show. Remember? Oh. You, you were in there. It was our last day of the contract. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did write all my charts by myself with mm -hmm. a little help from another guy. And uh, we did that tryout and, we and it went very well with all the Elvis song, Queen song. Yeah. And now what about fans? Do you ever have trouble with getting mobbed by fans on your um, ship? Or maybe you in my first con in my first contracts when uh, on with Carnival, you know, there were a little more a younger crowd on a three days cruises to Bahamas on a smaller ships. It was a really crazy crowd with all the young ladies and stuff. Uh, I actually had a few, you know, trying to do that, but you know, on a ship, you, you don't want to do have that, that kind Be of. Be careful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will tell you, you probably didn't know this on our ship, our, on our cruise. Mm. Um, when you were in that forward lounge, I forget what that was called, the one that was at like the front of the ship, the sli slightly larger. Oh yeah, one. on the um, spinnaker. Uh, yeah, something, something at the front of the, the yeah. lounge. But um, during one of your shows, I went to the ladies room and there were quite a few young ladies in there all chattering about you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was very cute. <laughs> they I mean, were all excited. So you had your little groupies on <laughs> that, you. even on that cruise, which was an older crowd. <laughs> yeah, thank you for telling me that. Yeah. But <laughs> mostly, mostly, you know, uh, if they're not drunk or stuff like that, uh, mm -hmm. they are very like hiding. See, like you say, mm -hmm. they don't really show it up much. So, <laughs> but yeah, I was just curious because I know I saw a few of the. Um, so-called headliner performers. Yeah. Uh, just there? out and about. Uh, what, I'm sorry. The headliners during your cruise. I can't even remember. See, that's the thing. We always said that you and Keisha should have been the headliners, but there was yeah. one group that was really good. I remember seeing a couple of the performers in the um, the internet cafe and kind of keeping their head down and trying okay. not to interact with any of the uh, of the guests because they were afraid of being recognized. But oh, did you have any uh, problems with that? Mm -mm. I mean, you know, that's kind of funny because when you're doing what we do and you go on a cruise ship, the thing that you want the most is to be recognized. Right. <laughs> so uh, I see it a little pointless because, you know, interacting with guests is uh, crucial for us yeah. because you are there. You are the star of that place and that's it. Once you, you know, you go on land, you are nobody again. So, you know, on a, sh on a ship, it's beautiful because it's completely a uh, uh, world, world apart, really. So I love and is that a world you're looking forward to getting back to? Sorry? Is that a world, that world apart you just said, is that a world you're looking forward to getting back to? Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> it's, uh, you know... Um, in between my cruise ship contracts, I went to Vegas in 2016. Oh. Yes, uh, but you know, definitely, it's the cruise ships are really the best place to be right now because you have to compromise all that stuff, and there it's it's great because you live there, you eat there, you work there, and you don't have the stress of the traffic. You know, you can just get in ready really 
10 minutes before your show and you go there. I mean, it's not like that, but literally if you're doing other stuff during the day, you're just there and you start. It happens a few times that, you know, we had a, a set in the early afternoon and a set in the early evening, and then we had all night off. And, you know, it's great for us because really, I hope this won't change. Uh, I've, I, I, I'm seeing few changes will come to control this pandemic, but. What, what kind of changes do you think are in store for cruising in the future? I mean, uh, for us uh, crew members, I've seen a lot of new trainings coming. I've, I see a lot of new measures for us, which it will be a little uh, harder to deal with it uh, because we already have a lot of measures, a lot of, you know, uh, safety uh, thing that we have to really stick uh, to it. So, but this will be new, newer and everything will be newer. I'm seeing that uh we are surely um i mean they are some of the companies are uh de um, delaying their re um, resuming to cruises because you know the changes are, are gonna be huge to avoid anything for you guests and and us that we work there so that's definitely uh you know a sad thing but a good thing if they are taking a little bit more because that means they're gonna do the best, really the best to, to avoid anything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm kinda, um, how you say, hmm, kinda curious about changes too, but there we're gonna be. <laughs> so you'll probably find them out before the rest of us. No, 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 I just, so? I just have the same information as you because, you know, that's how it works when you are not uh, employed or when you're on vacation or when you are home. Actually, your contract really literally finished the day that you disembark. So when, when you go back, when you go back to work, you the trainings you mentioned, you'll yeah. have some sense of then of yeah, but it will the passengers are going to be experiencing exactly. when they come. You will know, you will know only the day that you will, you get there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I've seen, and I've been, it's been nice for me that I've been in the loop for the first month because as a supervisor, I needed to know some stuff uh, and they let me know other stuff. But, you know, usually like right now that it's nothing. Really, uh, I'm on, I'm as a guest. I'm waiting on the Facebook page for the next announcement. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the meantime, we will be enjoying your performances on YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. And I appreciate your giving us this sort of behind the scenes look at what it's like to be experiencing the, uh, the cruise pause from the other side, from an employee for someone who this is their livelihood. And it's not just a Oh, I didn't get to take my vacation. This is this is my job. No, absolutely, yes. And I, I see a lot of posts from the people. Like one thing for sure that I can say, it's don't get stressed about any cruises that are uh, have been cancelled or stuff like that, because that's really good for you. If they did what they did, you know, they always do it for the best for all of us. And you know, if they are cancelling the first that are really suffering it's there it's us it's there it's the company so you know I, i'm sure that everybody are taking these measures it's really um, suffering to take these decisions but it's really for the best of all of us yeah well thank you thank you thank for you. having also, me on your podcast absolutely and also i want to say thanks for all the suggestions that you give <laughs> on facebook too i mean I really appreciate the feedback, just like you do. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. <laughs> well, it's great to watch your career take off. Like I said, it was a you were definitely a highlight of our cruise, and uh, I'm sure other people have fond memories of you and Keisha on their uh, vacations. And for those who have never seen Phil and Keisha. Uh, watch for them coming to a cruise near you or go on to youtube and to facebook and uh discover their music wow you can be my my manager from uh, <laughs> more uh, how about your fairy godmother <laughs> nice nice fairy godmother
grandmothers don't take a cut of what you make. So <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna close uh, for our um, subscribers here on YouTube. Uh, we had Jennifer uh, here, one of our guests and also uh, editor and journalist, uh, which we had the pleasure to have here and uh, asking, asking me some nice questions. Uh, so thanks so much, Jennifer, and I'll see you on the next videos, guys. Bye. Bye. -bye.